hello there. You caught me catching up on my reading. I've been reading an interesting book by Richard Hurley and David Virgo called Alternative Languages for the Spectrum. And as we all know, the limits of my language are the limits of my world. So I assumed, rather erroneously, that the only languages the Spectrum could support were machine code and Sinclair Basic. But what if other languages are possible? So today we're going to look at a few things inspired by this book. We're going to look at extending basic, we're going to look at changing basic keywords, we're going to look at how we can use a high level assembler to make life a hell of a lot easier, and finally we're going to look at fourth. What is fourth? I didn't know until I started doing this video. And I've got a book coming which is all about basic and fourth, but it's not here yet. So, let's get started. This is Extended Basic from Your Computer, July 1984 by Robert Newman. So, there are ways of extending basic. You can you do it using an interface one. However, Mr. Newman came up with a way of doing it without having interface one fitted, which is a good thing. So, what he's done here is, as an example of how to extend basic, he's created a new command, which is the keyword screen string with attributes of paper and ink. So he gives us the basic machine code with a checksum as data. The article also includes the actual assembler listing so you can see what he's doing. So what he's doing is adding some code onto the error stack. So when, when an error occurs, his machine code is called instead. And what it does, it checks for a uh, nonsense in basic error. And if a nonsense in basic error is caused by the screen string character, we then go, is screen string followed by two numbers that are common in between? If so, if so, then do our thing. Here, the only problem we had is he uses two different ways of getting the same number. So on line four, he uses clear to set RAM top, something appropriate, based on whether it's a 48K machine or a 16K machine, based on the, the peaking. And then on the next line, he sets the start address to one above RAM top using a different setting, which is a little bit confusing. The important thing is the start address is where he sticks his machine code. That's going to start one above whatever you clear as. So after doing this, whenever we come across the screen string command with some numbers, uh, we can do his new command. What you need to do at the start, though, is poke his machine code address onto the error stack, which is what lines 20 and 21 do. Once it's in place, it will reset itself every time you use it. But you have to do this first time because run clears the stack. So let's see what it does. The program runs. It does a listing. So you can see all the, all the lovely code, a few lines of data statements, a bit of poking. The error stack is based on some, the two uh, values in 23.613 23.614. Then you see line 40, we set the screen to cyan with ink blue, which is very unusual basic. Then later on we go in a loop and we keep setting the screen to uh, various values. So let's see how that works. So here we set the screen to cyan and blue, and now we're sliding through the colours without poking all the addresses, because the machine code does it for us, and without having to use clear screen. So rather than, because clear screen will change the colours for you, but will also clear the screen, here we keep what's on the screen, but can change all the colours. Not all colours will be useful, of course. Prove how useful this can be. We're now going to load my loading screen logo. And then we're going to go through this loop again, changing the, changing the screen colours over and over again to get a nice cycling effect. We are putting in a small pause, which is a random number just to A, mix it up a bit, because if you don't put a pause in, it's far too fast, and it finishes in a fraction of, it finishes in about a second. 
because it's super good. Here we go. So we're now loading the attribute bytes, and then we'll be changing these as soon as it finishes loading. What a lovely effect. Papers 2, paper 3, paper 4, paper 5, paper 6, and we end up with paper 7, ink 7, so it all vanishes. And to prove that, I can enter screen string again with some attributes. So I want to set the paper to white, but I have the ink as magenta. Lovely. This is from MC Microcomputer, a hardware and software magazine from Italy. This was published July, August 1985. It's number 43, available on the Internet Archive. This is Basic Italian, written by Paolo Cena from Boreana. The idea is, why not change your basic code so the keywords are all in Italian? He does this with a bit of machine code. He holds the machine code in a string called C string. There is a checksum. And like a good programmer, he actually checks the checksum to say, look, have you typed this in correctly? And I've made a very small mistake. On line 2, it says 73. It should say 7E, which is E for echo. And thanks to the checksum, he's caught that and stopped me making a, a wreck of the system. I've made some other errors in the code, though. So not only does he provide the machine code, which does some quite clever faff faffing about, he also provided the assembly listings, or the Listato assembly, as they say in Italian, for the different routines for to activate and to do the different types of printing. Which is all very, very clever. It's all based on interrupts. And when you when you, know, you get tokens, it basically replaces the token with the Italian token. Now I've got a problem where I've actually entered the code that is printed correctly, but it's not what he wanted. So the character I've put in was the less than or equal to character, which is one character on the spectrum, uh, along with greater than or equal to and not equal to, which is the less than greater than. Unfortunately, that's not quite what he wanted. And there's no way of telling that from the printed listing. What he actually wants is two characters in each case. These are just uh, text for ln, which is a natural logarithm, exponent int, circle, I think, sign, absolute, blah, 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 blah. So here I've got one character, it should be two. No way I can know that from typing it in. So I correct that. And we try again. It runs and resets to Sinclair Research, which is nice. We do, we do a list and that's not quite right because there's some odd characters there. Um, and print is now stamp semicolon, not stamper which suggests I've made another error. Errors are unfortunately quite common, and fortunately the error is in the um, basic code, not the machine code, because machine code is, uh, yeah, I spelled run wrong as well. Machine code is very intolerant of errors, because it doesn't know any better. So go back to, the, back to the code, and the error I've had here is adding up these values. This should be 128, not 122. So we try it again, save the tape. See? And now we can say is now stamper. We're going to say buongiorno. And then venti, bordo. What does this do? Integer, random multiplicata, otto. And then trenta, vai a dieci. There we are. And this does this. Just printed, it's the standard stuff. So this is now a text adventure which I typed in from basic also from MC Market Computer and I've loaded it from tape and it's now translated it all into Italian. So insert is input set i string equals something something allora via genti 103 stamper etc etc. It shows you what you could do if you really wanted to do. A lot of people just didn't bother and just learned the basic keywords. However this shows you what you can do with a positive mindset. Typing in machine code is rather difficult. So here we're going to use a professional assembler routine, which is published by Highsoft in 1983. Original cost was £14, but it came with an editor, assembler, a monitor and a debugger. Here I've used the editor to enter a very simple 
routine, which is 10 return, which is ret, and I've assembled it, and it says, yep, yeah, it identified ret as being the hex code C9. It's the simplest thing we can possibly do. I was able to find the manual on World of Spectrum. You need to look for the version 3 uh, manual. I'll put the link in the description below. And now we're going to save the machine code to tape, which is over the object for the code. We're saving it as the file return, which we've now done. And having done this, we're going to switch back to basic. And clear. And we're going to load the machine code from tape. This is all completely pointless, but the idea is it's the most simple thing we can possibly do. So here we're loading our one byte of machine code from tape. That's how you do it. So that's now loaded at a certain address, and we've loaded it into memory at address 34976, and at that address it is 201. And if we execute, this is the worked example from the HiSoft uh, developer's manual, which was um, typed in by Nelly Abels Ludwig in 1998 and then transcribed by Robert J. Baker. It's available on the World of Spectrum website. So this is the worked example which I've gone through just to get familiar with how the editor works. Here I'm in input mode, I'm entering various comments. A comment line is preceded with a semicolon. So what we do here is we create a fast integer multiply routine which multiplies the registers HL by the registers DE and then put the results into HL to return it. Full instructions are given in the instructions, which go through making deliberate mistakes, correcting the mistakes, using ed editors and so forth and so, and so on. But the important thing is when you, when you enter a line, you get the label first, then the assembler instructions. You saw the big jump there, that was cap shift 8, which is tab. Here I'm telling it, please start the uh, at address in hex df00. If you get an address which is invalid, um, you'll get a bad org. You'll get a bad org if, for example, assembling the machine code would result in it overwriting the assembler itself. So here I'm, I'm nice and high, so nice and safe. So what exactly are we doing? We're typing in this thing. You've got various labels, which are MU1, MU2, MU3, MU4. You can jump to these because it, it works out where they are and then lets you jump to them. So here, if we... Jump relative, not zero, jump to MU2, etc. And here we're adding the contents of DE to contents of HL, then we're returning. So we're now going to try and assemble it. And we've instantly had an error where I've made a mistake. And the mistake is I'm doing a, an EX and I've got a label called DEL. However, the label DEL is just a typo. What it should be is MU2, so the label, tab, EX, tab, then it's DE, which is a register pair, comma, HL, another register pair. You should now be able to assemble cleanly. And we go through, we show the entire listing, and the machine code is in the second column. This is why you don't do it manually, because it gets tricky. C9 is return, as we already know, so we are clever. What we, it now provides is the ability to have a test routine, so you can renumber the assembler lines and add this routine at the, at the front. What we're going to do, to do is multiply 50 by 20 and give us the results. And again, there's a deliberate error in the code um, put in to make you debug it properly.
Fortunately, I put in an a, a undeliberate error. Line 200 should be call with a capital call. You enter hex codes with the uh, hash mark before it. These are all um, assemb um, assembler routine mnemonics. Here we're loading a hex value of 5C3A into the, a the a I Y register pair because we're going to do a call to the ROM in some fashion. So the Spectrum ROM routine has things we were allowed to do. So now we're finishing. Now we're trying to assemble it, but this time without a listing. And again, we've got an error. We fix that. We're now going to tell it where the entry point is, because you can also execute the machine code from within the uh, assembler itself. But you have to tell it where the entry point of the assembler is. You do that with the ENT command and then the dollar. That means start here, please. So if I assemble it again with A, option 2, option 4, sorry, which means uh, don't tell me anything. It says that that will execute at address 36,006. If I run it, it says all oh, the results 32. And that's blatantly wrong. 50 times 20 is not hex 32. The error is we had an OR on line 380, which should have been exclusive OR. So we reassemble it. All works fine. It's now slightly longer. And now the result is 3E8 in hex, which is in fact 1000 in decimal. This is successful. And what we can now do is save the assembler source as an include, which we've done now with the, with the T command from 9300 to 999, and finally save the machine code as, um, as bytes. We're now going to look at the program fourth. This is a type in fourth compiler editor by David Millington from Your Computer, January 1984. A commercial fourth compiler editors are available. I'll be looking at those in a future video. Fourth is an interesting language. Um, it's not one I came across before. I first came across it based on a bizarre programming cover, which you'll see on the screen there, which is um, eye-catching, at least. So the main feature of fourth, as Mr. Millington points out, is not um, people in leather, but it's all about, I think it's called reverse Polish notation and the stack. But here, though, before we get into the code, is actually the compiler editor, which goes across several pages in the book. And the basic code isn't too bad to type in. There are some machine code segments, which you can get wrong, and I do get them wrong. And then there's a half a page of machine code, which I looked at, and my eyes started to blur. So I got that from World of Spectrum and combined my typing version with uh, this version. But essentially... It's a build a editor for you, which you can use, you can uh, and start programming. So fourth is all about stack manipulation. You put numbers onto a stack, you take them off, you add them to it, and so on and so forth. Uh, there are fourth words such as full stop. A full stop means fetch the top number on the stack, remove it, and print it. If you have plus, that takes the first top two numbers from the stack adds them together and then puts them back on the stack. You also get to find words, which are basically subroutines. You define them with a colon. A uh, semicolon is um, used to end a statement, and left bracket is open, open um, comment. So this is a rather challenging program, which does actually work. It was actually it took a lot of time. I think the clock there, already 20 minutes in. Um, but it works, and it gives you the option to save your source, to load your source, or to save the actual machine code to tape. And we'll do that in a little in a little while. But here we're going through string handling. So essentially, if the first character of the string is left bracket, then do not bother compiling it because it's a comment. So let's leave that line alone. Then we move forward to line 5100. We're looking for various special characters. Now on to the 7000s, we're sitting looking up for the error routines. We handle various errors, and these are based on addresses, followed by a sequence of machine code statements. Again, don't get these wrong, please. 
and these track forward and they end with a minus one. Minus will indicate that's the end of data, don't read anymore. Thank you. This works quite nicely. And so these are the fourth words. So plus is the word, which is a string, and that's followed by the address in memory where it's loaded. Minus is the next word, which is an address 43245. Then you get drop at 43260. If you get these numbers slightly wrong, then it, the um, editor won't work properly. And there's about four or five lines of these. And I need, I got some of them wrong, so I had to cross correlate these with uh, the version of the world of Spectrum. So I could have just got used that version instead, but I didn't. I wanted to do it properly, like I would in 1984 if I had this program. Emit is a version of print that just drops a character on the screen. It's not the most useful um, fourth command for printing strings, but it is literally used for control characters, and we will use that in a little while. Int is not, int is, uh, not standard fourth, by the way. Um, so now I'm going to clear memory and load the words, which is the machine code routine from tape. So this is the editor in action. I'm going to type in a sample program provided by Mr. Millington, which is going to be a count routine. I mean, define the word, um, called word count with colon space count, and we're going to give it, it starts off with a, a do loop, which says go, st stop when it hits two hits 10,000, start at 1, do a loop, brackets is a comment, which is set up the loop. Then we have what ha the reverse Polish notation, 22 omit, which means print character 22, followed by 0, followed by 0, what that really means is print at 0, 0. As we see here, we're going to move the print position to the top of the screen. You can also do a print with a uh, quote mark as well, instead if you prefer, which is a lot easier to do with a lot easier to do. Here, ind copies the current loop to the stack, and dot will print what's currently on the stack. So those two together are if they see print the current number, and then we go out to the top of the loop. And that's all we need to do. First, we're going to run it. We run it, and we see here on the top of the screen, you get the word count pops up. And it very rapidly goes from one up all the way up to 10,000. On the top left of the screen, because that's due to the 22 emit zero, emit zero, emit. If those numbers were different, we can move, make, it, make it move all over the screen if we so desire. So th this means we can run our program within the editor first before we uh, save it to tape. That worked nicely. We should now save it to tape with the uh, asterisk. M save and then a file name. File name being, of course, count. Open the spell. Press, press record on your tape recorder. Here we go. Now, what it doesn't tell you is how to actually execute it. So, I load my um, code from tape. So, first of all, we'll do our reserve the memory. We're cleared at 43199. So, we start at 43200. And off we go. That worked fine. So first thing I tried was to uh, execute address 43200, which is not the address of my code. Goes, oh, okay. I was then thinking, uh, where is it then? That just returns. So what I was unfortunately doing was executing the words of fourth itself, which is not really what I needed to do. What I needed to do is execute the address immediately after abort, which would be, uh, it actually isn't very clear. So here I'm printing out addresses in memory, and when I have a return, I print out asterisk. So abort starts at 44014 and ends at 44016 with a 201, which is return. Therefore, my program starts at 44017. So we're not going to prove that by running it, and see here it prints somewhere down there because I've not reset. So here's a little program. We're going to change the ink color, print at the top of the screen. No, print on different um, rows, or we'll try to at least. Different ink colors based on I. And then we're going to execute the machine code, which is at 44017. And then run this. And it goes up. 
and then when you, when you get to the next colour, you think it will go on the next line. No, it doesn't, because the print position is actually hard coded in the fourth machine code. So here we have red. So we're going around the loop several times. Around and around, as fast as it goes. And this runs all the way through magenta. Then to green. And cyan. Yellow, which is very hard to see on a white background, but not as hard to see as the next colour you'll see, which is white ink on a white background, and now we have completed. And that is the code that ran it. Ah, we're back. So, thank you for watching that little video. I've only just touched, scratched the surface of this book. It talks about the C language and logo, which I will be covering in an upcoming video. I've uh, also got a book coming on BASIC and FORTH, which I'll be delving into using a, a professional uh, FORTH compiler, because this book talks about the FORTH compiler from Melbourne House, not the one it's typed in from a magazine, that didn't support the quotation mark thing for letting you print, which is a bit of a limitation. But, but as for now, we're back to more games and silliness next week. But, thank you for watching.